So it's happy Monday. We're starting a new week here at SNG and we're working on the robot. Yeah, we're working on the robot. And uh, well, besides making a mess and I am making one heck of one, uh, I was unable to locate a piece of wood here without leaving to go somewhere to make this ring and turn it on the lathe. I thought of all kinds of ideas and ways I could do this, but none of them would have worked. And least of all, I would have been taking a piece of plywood and trying to lave that. If you've ever tried that on a wood lathe, you'll find it's not very pleasant. So, what I did instead is use a compass. There it is, compass, and made a six, uh, a six inch diameter ring, which is what it is, and I'm gonna pour resin in here. Two part polyurethane resin, and pull this out, I will have this little mark will show, I'll know right where to drill it on the drill press, and then I can put it on the lathe over there, and taper it, and shape it, and, and, and put the recess in for the neck. So, that's what I'm gonna do. So, I'm gonna show you how you do this. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of this uh, Mother's California Gold, ultimate, uh, it's a wax. Is it McGuire's? I don't know whose it is, but it'll work. I'm gonna take this wax, and I'm going to, and of course I'm doing things with one hand. I know, why don't you get a tripod? We'd like your, you'd like your photography better if you had one. Well, you know what, I've had, uh, I've had about 10 complaints in all these years about the shaky camera work. Uh, so what I say to you is, don't try watching the remake of Battlestar Galactica which I think is one of the best remakes of any science fiction program ever made. It's better than the original, in my humble opinion. But it's all handheld, and it's, there's a lot of what you're seeing right now. So, uh, and it is a style that you may or may not like. I didn't at first, but I got used to it. In fact, I started to like it. I mean, I don't like it when it's like this, okay? But just, you know, handheld, first person, it's kinda nice. So anyway, so I brushed that nice coat of wax in there. Uh, we're gonna let that dry a bit. I'm gonna wipe it out just like you, know, you do a car and uh, Then I'm gonna pour up two-part polyurethane resin, which I'll show you in a minute Okay using TC 808 rigid urethane foam, which I purchased from Berman Industries uh, And I'll get really close there and hold it still I can do that That way you guys can freeze frame that and get the telephone number and everything you can talk to John there and he will help if you get something from them. Tell them I sent you, Steve Neal. They'll go a long way. <laughs> They'll hang the phone up on you. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, anyway, this is uh, AB 50-50 ratio, 100 to 100. Uh, very typical material. Lumalite makes it. Many different companies make it. I use this because I get it from Berman's. It's about $100 for two gallons. Um, and you can see I've weighed it off on this beautiful scale. 120 grams in each one of these. I'm going to pour them together and mix them up and I'm going to pour them in there in a few Minutes we will have what I need for the lathe now. I warn you. This is real rocket science So I got a popsicle stick and I'm going to pour it in here This will give me a few minutes of working time uh, Depending on how cold it is and all that kind of stuff eh, You know Give me about five minutes maybe if I'm lucky it's a little warmer today, not too bad. And then I'm gonna stir this up like so. I'm gonna need both hands to do it and pour it into there. Okay, I poured it. Now, as you watch, magic will start. That's right, any minute now. This is getting hot. You can feel it getting warm. You'll start to see what looks like, almost like the Genesis uh, effect happening. We're forming a nebula, which eventually will turn into a planet, see? Isn't that cool? Now, I mean, most of you, come on. I know you have worked with this material before. Um, and I really wish this was more round, but there it is. And uh, you have worked with it, so you know, and you're very familiar with it. Uh, but it is kind of magical, and it always has been magical since the first time I ever worked with it. Uh, to be able to have something like this so instantaneous now, I'm not sure it's thick enough. It's, uh, yeah, I th actually looking at it, I think it is. Uh, we're going to uh, lave the piece a bit. So maybe we need to be at an angle. So maybe we need to go a little higher. So I'm just going to mix up some more. And for some extra added fun, we're going to pour up another uh, Iron Giant head. 
So uh, I've poured up quite a lot for that. This is already hard. And I've got a uh, 400 gram batch. I'm going to put it in there, roll it, roll it, roll it, roll it. And just as it starts to set up, I'm going to dump it out. So there is our Iron Giant uh, head cast out of the same material instead of 1630. And because this has no filler in it, it's going to be very, very strong. It's pretty darn smooth inside too, so it's going to really make for a nice piece to work with and do uh, mechanizing and cutting out the eyes and stuff uh, and sanding on the outside, getting really extra smooth. But you can see this material sets up pretty fast. It's kind of flexible and rubbery right now, but in about an hour it will not be and we can open it, as I can do with this now. I believe this is probably it's pretty hot still, but I, it's it's pretty firm, so we can open this, uh, which is what I'm going to do. As you can see, the wax, and also I use some of this stoner rocket release, which is for uh, polyurethane resin release, which you can also get at Berman's uh, and other places, but you see how well that's releasing, and uh, so I've got a really nice piece here. Um, and we're going to uh, hopefully flex it loose from this. Uh, I believe it'll come loose pretty well, pretty easily. Yeah, I'm right. There we go. And uh, you can see there's there's a dead center right there. Uh, it's kind of concave, which is fine. Uh, and it's not perfectly round, but we'll we'll fix that on the lathe. So now I'm having real fun. Uh, is this zoomed in? Okay. As you can see, I'm having a great time here, uh, getting all messy and making snow. This ought to be useful for something. But anyway, I've got this on the lathe, see, and isn't that cool? And I'm turning it and I forgot to shoot it for you. I'm sorry, forgive me, but it's coming out really nice. And so uh, I'm gonna turn this on. I think it's uh, still tight, yeah, it is. It's a little scary. I got a pretty high RPM there. And uh, I'm not going to do this one hip, one hand. It's not safe, but basically you take the lathe tool, you go at the angle, this does not move, and we chisel away. So I drilled a bunch of holes around that little line I put in there for this. See, so that just fits exactly inside there and then cut through. So this is actually uh, hol uh, hollowed out up to that edge. Uh, I temporarily cut these. They're not quite right, but they're pretty close to how they fit there. Um, this will actually be part of this part here, so when I make the mold, it'll, it'll actually be part of that. It will not be a separate part. It really worked out well. It looks very much like that. So I'm very, very pleased, because I did that, and I'm like, eh, well, about 40 minutes to an hour. So I'm, I'm tickled pink with it. I, I'd have to add more rings, and I actually have to make these a little thinner, I think, but it, it's, it's really, really cool. And now we're going to open this up. I'm going to take off all uh, these little clips and open this whole thing up. What's really, really great is back in the old days, this would have been an UltraCal 30 mother mold, but this is a 1630 mother mold. So as a result, things are a lot easier to open. Uh, this is so light, so it's very easy to tumble it and roll it. Uh, I'm going to set this here for now and uh, try to stay on camera and see if I can get this open, which I know I can. It doesn't take much. Uh, I'm rolling film. I'm, I'm, I'm shooting. I'm shooting. Yeah, I'm showing people how I do things. So. And we got a little bit of an indentation there. If that can be fixed. Here, you can shoot it. Here, yep, come back here. Come back, it's rolling. I don't know why that's there. Nothing we can fix. So we're gonna plot this side now. There we go. Nice, nice hand. And it's out of this material, which is not reinforced and doesn't need to be because it's really strong, but it's lightweight. Here we are with Darren Doctorman. You've seen him before? Hi there. And such shows as? Steve Neal's Garage. <laughs> <laughs> and Larry, your last name? Hurst. Larry Hurst. 
That's a hard one to remember, you know. <laughs> Not for Larry. No, I know. Who is, you have a good mnemonic for that. Who is uh, yeah. having his ears cast so he can have Vulcan ears? Because people say he looks like somebody. Who does he look like to you, here? He looks like Larry to me. Yeah, he looks like Larry. That's mm. what my kids are. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. no, maybe not. Anyway, anyway, these two guys wanted to have uh, prosthetic ears made to make them look like Vulcans for some reason. Probably because they've been wanting to do it since they were children, but they still are children. So that's why we're doing it, right? That's why we're, we're all children it. still, right? We're all children. We refuse to get old or grow up because you know what happens when you do that. You grow old and you stop growing. You become worm food, become yes. Well, I always wanted to look more Spock-like. I just wasn't sure which which uh, segment, which movie, which... Ah. Well, you could, I'm past probably the uh, early episodes. <laughs> We're somewhere in the like, circuit two, three... <laughs> Maybe the voyage home. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that'd be a good one. We were just talking about row, 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 row. And Paulina's helping us today. And Giselle's back there with Mary. And the robot's trying to wave, but he doesn't have his arms yet. <laughs> so we're casting his ears. You've seen this done before, and you will see uh, somewhat of the whole process. The alginate is just about ready to go. We have Darren's ears over here. His were being troublesome. They, they didn't want to work the first time, but we got them to work fine. They just wouldn't listen. They wouldn't listen. And, well, part of it's because you were breathing through your ears, and it caused bubbles. Well, yeah. I can't help that I'm from Atlanta. Oh, look at that. Some handy... UltraCal 30. Now we're doing these out of UltraCal 30 into alginate and then then they're going to be mounted in the back plate and then we're going to make a silicone mold and make them out of 1632 part polyurethane resin because they will not break and it's it's the resin of it's the the resin of choice. We don't use stone and plaster much anymore. That's old school. So resin of choice. That's it, the resin of choice. So here is uh, we got Larry's ear over here already filled with UltraCal. This is the casting we just pulled off right there. And Paulina helped me with this, and Giselle, and it's just so good. It's so perfect. Just, just like professionals. So we're gonna pour, <laughs> we're gonna pour that up with this stuff, and you know the deal. We're gonna pull these out. And you're gonna have ears and stone, which will clean up. So there we go. We've got uh, some very successful ear castings from these two gentlemen. Thank you very much for being such cooperative Thank subjects. You. Thank you. Very exciting. Yeah, and so, um, oh, wow, geez, thank you, but, uh, yeah, we're going to make some, uh, Vulcan ears. Pointed ears. Pointed ears, that's right, because, right. uh, you know, I'll never forget Majel Barrett, uh, she, uh, came over to me when I was at the conventions in the 70s and said to me, Steve, it's fine that you're making these ears, but you might want to call them pointed ears. <laughs> And that's how I met Majel. <laughs> she didn't want me to get busted. Yeah, but she didn't have to do that. I mean, she was, that was really nice. But anyway, which all this takes me back to. So it's going to be fun. Looking forward. We'll start uh, doing the back plates and all that stuff next stop. Well, continuing from last week into this week, because we didn't get a show, uh, here it is Wednesday, uh, the 16th, I think it is. No, 17th. Um, We've been working, Isaac and myself, very, very hard on, but uh, something is there, uh, which is our TV pilot. And I want to m mention again, there you can see the Enterprise, you happy? Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, it is. Um, which I always forget to mention. Uh, a lot of people said, oh, I'm not interested in a documentary. Uh, it does say hosted by Whitley Strieber, who's my friend and a very well-known author, the author of Communion and Wolven and hunger and many other uh, uh, great motion pictures and books. This is not a documentary. Rod Serling hosted uh, Twilight Zone and uh, so did Newland host One Step Beyond and so on and so forth and they were dramatic series. All he does is introduce you to, to the universe that you're about to enter into uh, with the stories that are told, and but something is there. It is a dramatic series, in fact. It is not a documentary. And like any dreadful and other shows you've seen, uh, it is a is a drama. So, uh, which has the, which deals with uh, the visitor experience. So, uh, so we're working very hard on it. It's just Isaac 
and myself, like I said, we're doing editing, sound, visual effects, CGI animation, and everything. And we have a lot of shots to do, and um, we're hacking through them. And we've done a great job. We're getting actually seeing light at the end of the tunnel. So here we are in that room, and this is before I got textured. Uh, I did since a, a separate animation of the visitor creature, uh, which is another layer. And I'm just going to scroll through this. This isn't actually uh, uh, rendered out, but you can get an idea of the nice animation I put in the creature walking and its movements. And um, he looks all around the dome room. And this is the temporary field that I put up. Um, but I have since changed, so you get the idea here. It actually, this walk cycle turned out very well. I did it with uh, with this basic rigging and stuff, and 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 he actually hand made it, animated it, sort of Ray Harryhausen ish style, uh, and, and got this. Looks much better when I'm actually running it forward. I'm just scrolling through it right now, but and then the logography starts. So, what I've done uh, since then and, and starting today is I've had this program for a long time. It's called Universe. It's a wonderful program. And um, big ass star map. I'm going to call that up. This map this is 10,000 by 10,000 pixels. It's huge. It's ridiculously huge. Uh, and then I've taken it into Photoshop and done this stuff to it. But. Uh, uh, you can see just how big it is. I'm scrolling across, scrolling across, scroll it's just absolutely huge. And it needs to be, uh, since we're doing effects on a 4K image level, but this really makes very realistic star fields. Uh, the galaxies uh, are okay. Uh, I'm going to have to redo them again. But as it turns out, when they're actually on the star map in the uh, light wave, they look really, really amazing. So. Uh, so that I've been using that and making new star backgrounds, animation, and all that stuff. It's a lot of work for just one guy to do. Because normally, if you go to movies and you watch the credits, you do watch credits, right? No? No? Okay. I do. Because <laughs> I want to I see and appreciate all the people that go into making that stuff happen. And with CGI, you've got someone to do textures. you got someone to do wireframes. you got someone to do... Uh, surfacing, surfacing meaning the, the sheen and shine and reflection and, and, and the feeling of the whatever the texture is on that object, the way, it re, the way it reacts to light. You've got lighters, you've got animators, you've got riggers, it goes on and on and on. We're doing all this stuff with two people. So it's, uh, it's quite an undertaking and it's, you know, not a lot to show really until the project is done. But that's where a lot of our time is going right now and it's going to be going that way until we finish this. And we're hoping in a couple of months time we will have uh, the entire show done, edited, cut and, and, and ready to show to uh, the people who have an interest in uh, purchasing it and, and also continuing on with it as a series. So that's what we're doing. I thought I'd give you an update on that. Now let's go look at the robot. So here's what I'm doing on the robot. I have got to get all this pretty smooth down in here. And here's all the parts that I made over the last few days, which you've seen me working on. Uh, put here like this so I will know how they go back together. Um, and the head's there. And so I need to do is, is keep going in here and sanding and smoothing and making it structurally very strong before I can take these parts and put them back in and I'm going to have to primer this and put the edging on it so I'm sanding and filling and doing a lot of that kind of stuff which is not very interesting but that's what I'm doing. Uh, once I get all this done then I can move on and make a mold. So here we go we're getting this really very solid very very strong you can see that these are all filled in now those gaps over here are filled um, and uh, I have to make some special tools tomorrow and go in and sharpen these edges up because uh, there's a lot of glue and putty that got in there I don't want so by making little uh, wooden tools with sandpaper I can go in there and, and score those off we're gonna really get this this torso done uh, this this has been uh, punched up with some putty which uh, will dry tomorrow. I have to run some putty in behind and mount that neck ring 
just right that I made. Then we gotta go around and putty up all this stuff and clean up all these things and get it all just perfect. I gotta put some, uh, some end caps on here. These will not be part of the mold. These will be separate with the little flares coming out, but this will just be flush to this edge. Well, welcome back. Uh, it's Thursday and I'm back at the computers and I'm working on, but something is there. And uh, I talked to uh, Wendy yesterday, who's one of the uh, owners of the program Universe, which I have been using for years, the free version, and I finally broke down and spent the whole $24 yesterday and 95 cents to get the full program, which is really quite spectacular. It's uh, an older program, uh, but it works very well, and it's really quite good for generating star fields. Uh, I'm going to give you an example uh, of how this all works. Um, um, I've already, over here, I've set the uh, type of stars I want and the color. I'm doing a blue background of stars first. Uh, and I want to lower the density of the stars, so I'm just going to select this tab here, cut the stars down. I'm going up. Okay, we'll go down, less density, because I just want some color mixed in. 15% is probably good. Uh, I'm at 10,000 by 10,000 pixels uh, quite large but again we're shooting at 4k I've just done a swipe and as you can see down there because the map's so big it's uh, taking its time to go and this is a very fast system that I'm on despite that this is a lot of area are of computing going on here so in Evira I don't need to see you this is huge this map I mean I'm gonna move the bar down here just so you can see on this big screen I have how far this thing goes. So here we are and believe me this is not too many stars it's just about right um, and uh, I'm going to now using this program uh, they have the ability to create uh, well we can do uh, single stars like this which so you can add the odd bright star in there I like to cut the drop off down a bit Okay, it's been a while since I've used this program. That's about right. And uh, you can just go like this. And you get a nice little hotter, bigger star there. I usually just do small ones like this. And you can do that anywhere you need them. Now the other uh, thing you can do is galaxies. Now the thing that's great about the galaxies is that you can actually change the angle uh, just by dragging like this. So um, And so I'm going to change the core color to uh, sort of a yellow. I go to custom colors and define it. I want to bring it down. I want to dull it out a bit so it's not so you know heavily uh, yellow. Uh, we're going to do star colors. We can actually do them, the outer stars, in a kind of a blue, uh, which some galaxies have. And I'm sorry, I'm not hitting the marks here. Then we get that, and then we've got uh, the gas. And you can actually add your own texture to the gas if you want. And, uh, and then there's a scale factor on it here, so you can scale it up. That gives the, the gas, uh, and I don't see is there a brightness on this. Uh, there, there isn't. I wish there was, but I'm going to basically turn the density down. That which may hopefully it won't be as bright. And I'm going to save this first. File save as biggest map two. There we go. Bingo. Oh. No, there's already a two, huh? Okay, we'll do a three. We'll save that in case I, I mess up. And I'm still messing with the scale factor. It's a little better. And we're going to... I wish they had a brightness for it. So I'm going to set a galaxy, and this is about the middle here. And there we got a galaxy. Okay, so I'm in Lightwave now, and I'm OpenGL, and I've got the background up, and 
you can see how it fades up and uh, this is looking a lot better so uh, when I render this uh, of course this is the background and it's a layer and uh, it's not rendering why isn't it rendering hello there we go shouldn't take very long to render this Boop, do, do, do. Hey. 11 seconds of frame okay and so there there is a rendered one um, and you can see how nice that looks so that's going to be it's the camera is washing it out a lot but it really really is nice and so I've been working on this all day and uh, I finally got uh, another rough done that looks really good and very promising and now I can do more but uh, everything's in place and I'll show you here uh, on this screen um, if I can it's uh, a lot of reflection here coming from the Sun right now so maybe I'll show it here uh, I will hit play and this is a, a preview you can hear my voice going slow See the holographic effect happening, and then it completely takes over. Uh, Look over at her, like what's going on. You can hear me directing him on the set. So that's what I've been working on uh, for the last four days. Is this shot? You got to see a little glimpse of it. I don't want to show you the whole thing because you're going to watch the whole show. My glasses are crooked. Uh, and let's go look at the robot. So I have been working uh, on cleaning up this fit. Going here, going to here, adding these edges to it, um, which I still have to fill in more here and here and, and true this up a bit more to this and sand this a little bit more at an angle and stuff but eventually I'll get these to be just perfect but the important thing is is that it's all in now and the ring is on permanently and uh, I drilled it out so it's now you can see I can get my finger down there and this piece of foam with the neck rings on it fits on there perfectly uh, so that when I actually have the mechanism in there to move the head this will all move really nice and flex really well right now there's a pull in there so it won't do that too well but uh, the nice thing is is that he is solid all the way around uh, I still have to add uh, the rest of the trim back here and blend this out I gotta get some finishing putty tomorrow which I don't have right now I ran out to get my famous red putty and get in here and clean up these corners they're gonna be a little tiny bit rounded but that's okay because the wood pieces that go through here are gonna really take away from that uh, we got a piece that goes straight across the back here like so and then connects up to there and then all those will be filled with putty and sanded over well here we are it's Friday Friday afternoon I've been here for a while working on yes CGI I'm doing a lot of CGI lately I like it I enjoy it it's great it's creative and it's contributing to finishing the film uh, which is great uh, you're probably noticing that painting in the background I know I am but I didn't plan it that way but now I see it, it really pops I did this in 1985 uh, and I did it like in four hours uh, this is why I was living in Burbank on uh, Western Avenue uh, it was always one of my favorites it was tucked back in the uh, closet there a bunch of stuff piled on top of it I felt bad there were scratches in it and, and scuffing although some of this is from like that right there and those chips right there that's from the 1994 earthquake um, and uh, it, it survived that. It says number one. I don't know why, because I only did one. But it's one of my favorite pieces that I ever done. Uh, I am now moving on to working on the robot. Um, I could sit there and show you blow by blow how I'm building this robot, and I've had some people uh, ask about that or even complain that I was uh, talking more than I was actually doing anything well we're doing a lot here at SNG I think anybody who watches the show will agree but it's really difficult these days with so many things going on 
to uh, show you every single step of the way, the way I kind of used to and don't do now. Agreed, I, I don't do that. So what I'm doing now is I'm still cleaning all this up. It's my hope today to finish off all this work in here and get this painted gray with primer. Maybe even get these uh, finished off, we'll see. Uh, get these pieces that go here on. And uh, get further along. And you can see that head just comes off like that. Uh, and this is the neck piece. I need more rings for it goes like that and uh, this has been opened up all the way now and so and, and blended on and we've got the piece back there just here which I might have to add some more too but I don't know yet okay I've been working on this all day while the computer renders and yes we're still a little rough in here I have to do a lot of sanding and stuff but uh, basically the fit of the wood pieces I made are really quite nice and uh, I have a little tiny bit of sanding and filling to do and I'm telling you this is going to be really uh, Really nice very much like the real thing by like the toy like the movie uh, I think I can even get about roughly the same angle there so you can see uh, I do have a little more space here than I think what the actual thing has uh, But it's what I had to do to get this right uh, it was most important for me to get this thickness and that uh, where these hit here just right. This will be in shadows a lot. Uh, probably I'm too wide here, but not according to the dimensions I took off the one drawing that was available uh, that uh, the director said and Adam said was correct, which was this line drawing. It's not here, but that's the one I used to blow up. So we're close. I have a lot of uh, work to do back here still, but you can see this was that pesky part. I couldn't figure out that's how it's supposed to be. So I am ultra pleased. Uh, also those rings around the neck there, uh, they are supposed to be darker gray. Uh, but I just put some quick primer on here just to get a, just to look, you know, to, to see how he's uh, looking. Uh, and I'm very inspired now to just finish off this torso and get on to the, uh, uh, the waist section because everything from there goes very, very quickly. So that's it uh, for this week and last week. I uh, hope you enjoyed the show. And I really want to say thanks to all of you. I know I do every week, but I mean it. I've got a lot of support. I've got a lot of nice, kind comments and, and people who follow what we do here at SNG. Uh, and... We greatly appreciate it, and we really do love you, and we'll see you next week with more fun with a robot. Uh, and I, there's some other stuff coming up, too, but you'll see what it is. We got a new, uh, another gig to do. The years, too, but yeah, you've seen that a lot. But we'll see you next week, like I said, with more fun stuff. <laughs> see ya.